Today on the Star Trek Universe podcast, we are talking about the new Star Trek short trek, Ephraim and Dot. Right after this... Welcome to the Star Trek Universe Podcast. My name is Matthew Carroll. I am David C. Robertson. All right, man. Let's talk about A from and Dot. The new fucking animated fucking bullshit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wonder how you feel about it. You Matt. want me to be honest about how I feel? <laughs> Sorry, I won't hold back anymore. Let yeah it's fine I, like it's fine. This is hmm. th- this is the least Star Trek thing I've ever seen, mm-hmm. and I'd mean that in every level. No, I, that's of mm. all the Star Trek things called Star Trek. This is the least Star Trek. I don't think that's true. Oh man, for me. All right, we, we, we can have a discussion about what you think is more Star is less Star Trek than this. But man, it, it is it, like I get what they're trying to do, and they could have done it well. Um, I don't even really mind what it is, like if it f- even fit into the fucking universe. But like. <sighs> Okay, I'm going to be super nerdy right now, but this is what we do here, and I'm fucking annoyed that th- 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 he he lays his eggs in the NCC-1701, and then yeah. they rescue his eggs from the 1701A, which are different ships. <laughs> right. Well, you know, they, they screwed the pooch on that one, honestly, because they... Technically speaking, as as presented in the narrative, it is not a different ship. It is the refit ship, but they called it the A. Like, because the A didn't come along until after the 1701 refit got blowed up at Star Trek 3. Which is what was depicted at the end of this short. Right. Um, so... They just screwed up and called it the A. And you would think, like you, we were talking a little bit before the show, you would think we would be the wrong people. Yeah, no, it made me feel crazy. But before we but just before we went live, I had to ask you, I'm not wrong about this, right? Like the 1701 was until was from the original series to Star Trek three, and then 1701A was after that. Right, like, you're absolutely correct. I was like, surely I'm the wrong one here. Surely it's no. me. The, 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 it's Not really the, the official thing. Official freaking <laughs> CBS thing is not wrong. Uh huh. And also, like, what's the timetable here? Because obviously, it felt like it was happening in 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 a in immediate time frame. But right, because this thing can supposedly, you know, we know the tardigrades can travel around yeah. uh, space like crazy. Like, why is it? Why can't it catch the Enterprise? <laughs> For, right for years apparently yeah i i think um i did um read on in the trivia on on memory alpha and i had not i was like i was a little confused by it and then i was reading and i was like oh that may that might make sense it says when Ephraim first encounters the enterprise she looks into a sick bay window and witnesses a conversation between kirk Khan, and mccoy Mm -hmm. From Space Seed. Uh, She lays her eggs in the Enterprise's warp core. Then she encounters Tribbles uh, from Trouble with Tribbles. And then she's in the uh, corridor and she hears Hikaru Sulu. And he's doing the naked nail thing with the rapier. Um, And then as she's like chasing around, we got the green hand of Apollo from, you know, who mourns for Adonis. So we've got uh, the Doomsday Machine, the Tholian Web, like all sorts of things. And uh, and then it ends up with Star Trek two, and then Star Trek three, and um, de- spanning decades here. Yep. And uh, the there was an idea here that it was that exactly what you said that the um, the tardigrade can kind of. Jump through time Exper- and space. Well, yeah, jump through time and space and experience time differently. Yeah, like I get that, and that wouldn't have bothered me. It would have been okay with me, but then they ju- they tried to make it seem like a chase sequence, like uh-huh. he was in a rush to get back to the ship. But if he mm-hmm. just like can go to different times and spaces, like he could have just gone. I don't know. It just didn't make it. 
it, it, it was all style, no substance whatsoever, and does not line up with the timeline after they fucking put an A on the Enterprise before it blew up. Like, what the oh. fuck? If you're if you're gonna get caught up though on the aesthetic of showing one seven oh one A on the wrong ship at the wrong time, let me just jump into my big issue, which is that the frickin' one seven oh one looks like the Discovery Enterprise on the outside, but in the inside it totally looks like the original series. And when she gets back to the 1701A, quote unquote, the engine room looks exactly the same as it did on the original series. And it totally did not in those movies. Like they had like the full like warp core tower. It wasn't like the multiple little warp cores that they had. Yeah. Like it looks completely different in the movies. Yeah. So it's like... (sighs) It's just, it's like they're just trying to have their cake and eat it too. And and the truth is, this just is not canon. Like, they can't be. No. Um, and, and as much as I fight for things to be canon, I guess we just have to assume that these, um, these animated things are not going to be canon. And if all they are is child bait, basically, like they're just yeah. baiting children into liking Star Trek, that's fine. But I think it's kind of uh, infantilizing to do that because kids can just like star trek the kinds of kids who like star trek are gonna like star trek you know (laughs) well this one was particularly weird to me because it was like calling back to the original series it was like they were actually trying to get us interested yeah exactly people interested but exactly the, the subject matter was kind of for kids oh yeah Absolutely. And, and it's a fun for kids thing. Like, and also it also, uh, this robot, it, it appears to have feelings and emotions, Yeah, which is something that like is kind of unique to data and not even data in the, you know, 24th century has them. Like it's, it's way later when he finally gets these emotions. Like I just don't understand. Well, I think they were going for like a Wally type of thing. Oh, they were definitely going for a Wally type of thing. They were definitely going for like a Pixar thing, especially with, hey, let's get Michael Giacchino, the guy that scored like almost all the Pixar movies to come in and yeah. direct this thing. So basically, I have almost nothing to say except it's, it's it's like a fun little thing for kids. That's what it is. And if I if I recontextualize it as that, that's fine. But like... I just don't. I don't see what game they're playing here. Are they? They trying to make a kids show for kids and then lure them slowly into the Star Trek universe until they maybe like the other stuff. Which I've said over and over, we're not doing enough to bring kids in. So yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm not opposed to some sort of game plan, but like, why have blatant like continuity errors and call it Star Trek? It just pisses me off. Um. <laughs> Because these people don't aren't paying attention. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. I've been I've been covering Watchmen over on Who Watched the Watchmen, and I think it is one of the best shows I've ever seen. They're paying so much attention to every detail, and so mm-hmm. when I'm seeing this stuff, it just pisses me off when people are given these budgets to do these like really amazing animations, and then you just don't pay attention to the writing of the thing. Yeah, and it's not like like it showed the Enterprise 1701, and then jumped and showed the Enterprise 1701A, like, not only is it a different, like, it doesn't make sense in the storyline of the thing you're telling, because it's a different ship. So if you wanted to, like, for for whatever reason, you wanted to jump forward to where they did, that's fine. It's still the same Enterprise. Maybe those eggs are still there, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, no one cleaned the Enterprise for that many years. Yeah, Um, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. Unless the eggs are, you know fluctuating on the same nonlinear frequency or I guess it was right. linear just <laughs> yeah like maybe, just... maybe maybe they're pulling that old Geordie no where they're out of it phase or something no those it wasn't linear those episodes were out of order oh really the these episodes were yeah. out of order okay absolutely <laughs> see I, like, I don't know it, enough about it, the it encounters a, it encounters a the tr- uh, trouble with tribbles episode before the naked uh the naked time uh, naked time happens way before okay and tell so. me what's up with the abraham lincoln i, I i've seen that before uh it's the savage curtain okay uh, it's, it's an episode it's not it, it's like 
I can't remember exactly what happened. It was like some alien species had like Kirk. Like, well, Kirk really admired Abraham Lincoln. So that we have Abraham Lincoln appear in space and then they're on the planet and he's like teamed up with Surak and Abraham Lincoln and God, who else? Uh, I don't remember who else, but they're fighting like Genghis Khan and <laughs> Kalis. I, I, it, it was a thing. Okay. <laughs> I, it's been um, for, I, it, it is one of my least favorite episodes. I never watch it. And I have not watched it in several years, like probably fifteen years. All right, <laughs> if well, not more. Well, I don't. I don't want to spend too much crazy amount of time talking about this episode or this this short trek because it's, uh, you know, it's fine. It's for kids. If you have kids and you want to introduce them to Star Trek in a yeah, like really non Star Trekky way, just to lure them in slowly, like sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I, this this gives me. This makes me scared for the animated treks to come, like the this lower deck series and stuff. I, I, I this I, I don't think this that's what this is is going to be like. I am not scared, um, because at any given time I can say this shit's not real. Well, yeah. Well, no, but no. It's it's it, this is this this is not canon at all. Like this just what? isn't canon. <laughs> Yeah, and what drives me nuts is like I understand the the their desire to d- just uh, plow into something um, and 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 kind of do their their take on it and and have like creative license, but you know they are going out of their way to reference several things within canon. Exactly, and uh, you know, and it's this it's the problem I've had with the aesthetic of Discovery the whole time is that you know you say it's prime, you say it's canon, but you're not showing us that, uh, like aesthetically. And I know that doesn't bother you, except it does now because it's, they literally just said it was the wrong ship. Well, that's not even <laughs> aesthetic though. That's a word on a thing saying what it is. It's one thing yeah. if they change the look of something. It's another thing if it's a different... It's just a different ship. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I mean, I would say the same thing, though. Just looking at the bridge on the Enterprise on Discovery, I'm like, that is a different ship. Yeah. Like, but that if is you, not if the ship. If you're in the same canon... You can re you can you can rebuild something the way it looks, but we just don't have any information to say they at one point called the seventeen oh one the seventeen oh one A for a while. It just doesn't. Yeah, make, no, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. So like you could say you could head. It's like this is unhead cannonable is my problem. I right. am I am on Team Star Trek. I am all for this shit. So like if if you if there's someone from Star Trek who listens to this podcast and goes to check in with what the fans think and we they uh-huh. they listen to us and they're like oh these are just stodgy guys not wanting us to try new things that's not what we are i am yeah. on board with so much and i'm even not that upset about all the aesthetic changes in uh in in discovery the aesthetic I'm changes don't bother it, me I, I i accept it yeah you, you're annoyed by it but you even accept it like yeah. this is doesn't this just doesn't even make sense like this little story you told cannot happen in like the, literally the wrong ship exploded, <laughs> you know, Yeah. like, gosh, come on. And, and it, like, why, why you had and, already rendered it with the 1701. Why did and, you re-render it with a 1701A? Who made that decision? It doesn't even explode. Right. Like the way the, <laughs> the oh, original no. enterprise exploded was so freaking iconic and they just botched it. Like, yeah. Anyway, I, <laughs> Somebody needs to be looking at this short going, my God, Bones, what have I done? Yeah, you could have easily just... You added an A. You added an A. It's not like you forgot to erase... I don't know. It just... I, I'm sounding like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a like fan trying to whatever. Like I'm, I sound like a stodgy fan, and I know I do, and I'm, yeah. I'm not. I like fucking... I just care like a little okay. bit, and I feel like the people making this stuff don't care at all. That's what pisses me off. They don't care. They're trying to monetize my fandom. Like mm-hmm. no kid cares about Kirk talking to Khan. They're just trying to monetize my fandom. You know what I mean? By putting yep. that in there, and then they are not at all caring about like 
the stuff that anyone that cares about the stuff the way I do care about. Yeah. I would I would argue that anyone who cared what you know about Khan being in sick bay talking to Kirk for a minute. I uh, most anyone is going to go I prefer the original series Enterprise. I prefer the way that looked instead of the Discovery exterior. I care whether or not it says 1701A instead of 1701. Yeah. You know, when 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 clearly that is the the ship that they're talking. I think it's sloppiness. Yeah. And I think is is one of the re- is one of the problems that a lot of uh discovery naysayers and and to be fair CBS all access naysayers uh bring up is just the the abject sloppiness of 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 the writers here uh for 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 these guys like i don't understand uh like i can i can you know can in a way a lot of stuff and people like put out these uh these videos that say here's the difference between discovery and next generation and then they like show you a clip of you know a morally questionable character suggesting some bullshit you know some shady shit right but they're a morally uh, questionable character that that's yes. not what we're doing and then they show you know Picard begin giving the the righteous speech and I'm like no he's giving the righteous speech against the morally objectionable character you know, the Th- those characters have always been in Star Trek. Always. Yeah, as they should um, be. There's always been the Commodore who wants Kirk to go and get him to his appointment instead of save lives. Yeah, there's always that Picard guy. has even been that character. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we just got done, we just got done with our rewatch of that uh, episode about Hugh where he wants to uh, yeah. kill, kill, use Hugh to, uh, to genocide the Borg and he has to be convinced by the other characters that's the wrong thing to do. Now, you, we can debate mm-hmm. whether it's the wrong thing to do and that's why it's a great episode, but like, yeah. so other people have to talk to him about the ideals of the Federation. Like, our captains shouldn't be perfect and they never have been. Mm-hmm. All right. That, that's all. We, we gotta move on because we got other shit to record about today, including another... Short Trek. Uh, yeah. Guess how we feel, everybody. <laughs> we haven't talked about it, nope. so I don't know. I'm presuming. I'm going to assume that you don't like it. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I guess we'll find uh, out tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. Live long and prosper. To reach out to us, hit us up at Star Trek UCast.com, at Star Trek UCast on Twitter, or search for the Star Trek Universe podcast on Instagram or Facebook. And if you want to hear more from David C. Robertson, search for the DC On Screen podcast in your podcast app now. Or go to maladjusted.tv for his comedy sketches. If you want to hear more from me, Matthew Carroll, search for the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast or the Orville Universe podcast in your podcast app. Or check out my music. Just search for Matthew Carroll wherever you listen to music. 